Jen Sterling. I'm an artist based in Eastport in Annapolis and I'd like to welcome you to my studio. Today I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour of the space that I work in and show you some of the pieces that I've finished and some of the pieces that are still underway and I can't wait to share it with you. So this is my space which has a lot of messy areas such as a shipping space where I can package things up when they've been purchased to send them off. And then supplies, of course. No artist can do what they do without a lot of supplies. And most of us will tell you we're a little addicted to supplies. So I have a fair number of canvases and boards and things that are ready to be painted on. And then, of course, over here, all kinds of supplies. Paint, you can never have too much paint. Um, and I am very lucky to have a teenager that keeps them in order for me. I get yelled at if I make a mess, so they generally stay pretty clean. And then over here, a wide variety of tools that are used to do the paintings. It's not always a paintbrush. Sometimes it's a roller or a squeegee. I've also been known to paint with my fingers, with sticks, with whatever comes to hand just to get the right effect on a canvas or to play and find out what it can do. So over here, we have some work that's underway. This is just a background that's been laid down and I'm not quite sure where it's going to go next, but that's part of the adventure is having a rough idea, but not knowing for sure. I'll let it sit for a bit and I'll come back to it and start to paint on it again and see what happens. Here's one that's a little further along. Again, not finished yet, but I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do next. I start with a vision, I start with colors, and I spend time getting emotion out of my head and onto the canvas. And sometimes I know where that's going to take me, and sometimes I don't. I think that's part of the fun of it, but it's also quite scary if you're painting for a show, for example, and you need to have a bunch of pieces done, you really need to be thinking fast <laughs> or working fast in order to have that happen. But sometimes the most beautiful things happen when you least expect it. So here I've pulled out um, a piece that's very important to me that I'd like to share with you. This one is called The Beginning, and it was in fact the first piece I did that left the home studio and was seen by anybody other than my family. Um, it's one I was very proud of, still am. Uh, it's still a favorite. I in fact use it for all of my branding materials, my business card and website, etc. cetera. Um, but it's very reminiscent to me of a phoenix coming out of the ground in the flames and being reborn and really the life of coming into being an artist and leaving behind the corporate life that I've spent so many years on. And I really, there's just something about it that is very personal to me. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I shared that one as part of the tour. Over here, we have some more projects that are underway. I found a bunch of circle canvases and was having so much fun trying to figure out what to do with them. And I didn't realize it's really hard to compose on a circle. Uh, it sounds like it would be simple. It's not. I've repainted them a couple times and I, I have a sense of what I want to do with them. But again, I'm going to let them rest until I figure it out. I invariably have 10, 20 pieces going at any given time. Uh, here's another series that I'm working on right now. I wanted to get something in the purple range. I had a lot of fun playing with the colors and textures in this. And there's some metallic that's a lot of fun. Each time you look at the canvas, you see a slightly different take. Here's another background that was laid down and is just getting ready to have something larger put on it. And then here you can see pieces that have made it through the process. This is my archive of painted pieces, finished pieces. Once I paint the edges black, I know I'm, I'm happy with them and they're ready to be shown and or sold. So I keep them here in an archive and then have a digital archive online where I can track everything by size and by subject matter. Um, they're all abstract, but I do try to put them into a collection by subject. Some may be more watery images, some may be more bold colors, strokes, and images. Some are splatters, so I try to, to book my art that way. And when pieces are ready to be shown and or turned into products, uh, because I do use a lot of my art to create products, shirts and shoes and bags and notebooks and things like that, I'll bring them over here and I will light them up um, to get really, really good color. 
lights from different angles. This is a display unit that I use when I do art festivals. So it stays here in my studio all set up so that I can take photography on it. These are a pair of pieces that I recently completed that were based on what I thought it would look like underneath the surf as the waves come in. So this is under the wave number two and number three. And again, there's lots of layers and colors and textures in here. And each time I look at it, I see something a little bit different. So I was very pleased with the way that these two came out. This is another piece that I recently completed. This one's called Just Keep Swimming. It was done during the pandemic lockdown. Luckily, I'm the only one in my studio, so I could be here without breaking any laws and continue to do my work. And this one was originally a very dark piece, and I actually did a live Facebook of painting over it and showing where I could take it. And I was trying to bring myself out of the dark, scary, stressful place when the pandemic started and we were all in quarantine and taking it to what could happen afterwards and the energy that we could bring back to our lives and to maintain our moods and in fact, surpass our moods. So that's where the name Just Keep Swimming comes from as well. I'd really like to thank you for joining me for the studio tour today. It was so lovely to have you here. And thank you to the Maryland Federation of Art as well as the Four Rivers Heritage Area for making this project possible. It's so nice to be able to share my studio with you despite being in lockdown. At some point, I'd love for you to be able to come visit in person. In the meantime, please live boldly with color. Mm -hmm.